Victor True, his wife Michelle Martin, and an accomplice, Michelle Lalievre, were taken in for questioning. Over several hours of interrogations, all three maintained their innocence. He was consistent in his lies, following each lie by telling another lie. It was a manipulative behavior. But otherwise, he stayed very, very calm. Belgian authorities had no choice but to eventually release Lalievre, who denied being with Dutroux on the day Letitia was kidnapped. But moments after he left the police station in Charlois, a startling witness account came through. Les voisins. The neighbors of his property in Marcenay saw Marc Dutroux and Lilev return on Friday evening carrying a child covered by a blanket as they returned to his house, to Dutroux's house. Lilievre was immediately re-arrested and taken back into custody. As his accomplice's alibi began to crumble, Dutroux's interrogation took a drastic turn. The true knows that we had proof that Letitia was in the car, so he says, yes, I was in Batrice, which he denied at the start. I met a young girl, I talked with her, and then she told me she was tired of her parents. Stories, because there are parts against him and he changes the stories to suit his narrative on the spot. Then, at the same time, Lilev said she was with the true, and finally on Thursday, he ends up telling us now that all of these parts of the story contradict each other, I will give you the two girls. Dutroux pointed to a poster inside the interrogation room of another missing girl, Sabine Dardem. Twelve-year-old Sabine had been kidnapped by him in May. Two days after his arrest, Dutroux confessed and took the police to the basement where Sabine and Letitia were found alive. On the 15th of August, 1996, Dutroux led the investigators to his property in Marcinelle, where hidden behind a false wall in the basement was the dungeon where he'd been keeping Sabine Darden and Letitia Del Hay locked up. He pulled down the wardrobe and inside the cage behind was Sabine and Letitia. And then we got this, yeah, at that, that moment, incredible news that two kidnapped girls had been found alive in the cage of a, a person who had been convicted before for this kind of crimes. It was such a huge thing. All the journalists were on the scene at the time. The news, magazines were there. It is as if there had been a terrorist attack. No one could believe that such a person could exist in Belgium. It was unthinkable. Douglas de Conning was one of the few journalists who was allowed to enter de True's basement. We had seen pictures, we had been seen images, but being there is, is uh, difficult to describe because it's 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 like constructed to to you wouldn't even put a dock in. Uh, such a small place. This was really the, the, the kind of cage they made to, to, to hide guns from the police. As Belgium awoke in shock to the news that a man from Marcinelle had abducted, raped and tortured two girls over several months, the families of Sabine Darden and Letitia Del Hay rejoiced that their daughters had been found alive. They are rare occasions when we find the relatives and a policeman or a magistrate has the opportunity to return a child who had been kidnapped in such circumstances alive. It's fantastic, obviously. It is a joy that can be shared with the parents. Over the next 48 hours, investigators continued to relentlessly question the truth. They were desperate to find the two eight-year-old girls, Julie Lejeune and Melissa Russo, who'd been missing for more than a year. Marc Dutroux was playing a game with his investigators. He knew that uh, he, he never would get out of prison anymore. 
He knew that he would be presented as uh, the most famous criminal we've ever had in Belgium. And he wanted to exploit that situation. He had to be flattered. They had to make him believe that they believed his pitiful story, make him believe that things were not that bad for him. It's true that you were ingenious on this one. You were not caught and you fooled the police and here and there. At that point, his ego, his ego had been flattered and little by little he let information slip. That's his attitude.